Hello and welcome to the Media Bubble podcast, the podcast that talks about movies, anime, comics, video games, and whatever we feel like. I'm your host, Frederick, and with me as always is my co-host, Carol. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the Yumanji movie series, and a little bit of Carol's personal feelings of how he feels about these three movies. (laughs) I mean, I mean, we can't make this just a whole episode where I rant about the remake. Like, we have to bring out the good, the good qualities in it as well. Mm. So uh, maybe we can start uh, start of how this came to be. Uh, you were with me one one day, and we were going to watch a movie, and I thought Yumanji would be a perfect movie for us to watch because I thought this was. The perfect blend of uh, humor and not taking itself too seriously. Yeah. Which I, I thought was a combination that we too liked, but maybe not, I guess. I mean, I personally loved the original movie, so I thought that Jumanji would just be a great pick. But I was wrong, and uh, I I disliked it. I, I just wished it could end. <laughs> But it didn't end, did it? No, it took up an hour and a half, maybe more of my life. <laughs> but did you did you come in with it with a fair chance, did you feel like? Or did you dislike it after the first minute and never changed? I mean, honestly, I gave it a fair shot. Because I was, I was like, I still have positive like feelings for the Jumanji, like, as I said, the original movie. So I thought, well, mm. I mean, it's a sequel. It's got to be good. Because the thing that I don't really get in this situation was you didn't like the remake, but you watched the sequel to the remake and you have now told me that you liked it. Yes, the sequel was amazingly like, as I said, it was it was better. It wasn't it didn't make the whole series like good mm. good but it was like it, it just it, it was just like a little bit better than the origin than, than the than the first remake like i actually began mm. liking it in the like 30 last minutes of the movie so should we start talking about three movies we can start with maybe the original robin williams movie then uh, i guess yes so it was uh, the original movie uh, was made in 1995 i think uh, and it follows the story of, uh, let me see what, what what was his name, of Alan Parrish, who is a uh, like a tween boy in his seventies, uh, and he's his father is like a factory owner. He makes shoes, and he's being being bullied and like uh, uh, like mm. kids are really mean to him because they see him just like a, as a rich boy, uh, and he also hangs out with one of the like one of the uh, girls who is the, like the girlfriend to one of the, like top dudes yeah kind of um and he finds this game through uh what, what was it a building construction exactly so as his as the factory is expanding he one day as he was running away from bullies he he found the game being lodged like in in a wall of earth because at the beginning of the movie, we see two brothers or two friends buried the game in like 1700s so that nobody else can play it. Yeah. And this game is a bit weird in a way because it, it actually changes like to modern times because the game changed when it was in the 1700s to something more like a board game of the 80s. I mean... I think the Jumanji changing shape came with the remake because, like in 1700, it was still the same board game. Um, was it a board game in the original? Yes, it was a board game. Um, oh, okay. And it was Sorry. funny because uh, as as like we meet uh, Alan and like we see Sarah, uh, there's this like uh, they're like sitting and they're talking about because uh, Sarah, being the girlfriend to the bully that bullies Alan, she came back with his bike that they stole. And Alan's like, yeah, let's play this uh, board game when my as my parents are gone. And she's like, board games? I stopped playing board games five years ago. And how old are they in this movie? I don't know, like twelve. 
like as I okay. as I said, like tweens, like eleven, maybe twelve, and I'm just like, girl, you are still a child. Like, come on, <laughs> don't make me feel like that. <laughs> yeah. I even I even wrote in my notes. I swear to God, I'm gonna slap a child. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill this imaginary child that is on my TV right now. Yes. So what happens is they start to play Jumanji. With the first roll, they get bats that invade their home. With the second roll, uh, Alan is sucked into the vid- uh, is sucked into the board game. And if uh, another player rolls either a five or an eight, he will be released. Yeah, and this is kind of where the movie makes a time skip in a way because. When Alan is gone, she uh, she doesn't complete. Uh, Judy doesn't. No, oh, wait. wait uh, what was her name again? Sarah. 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 Yeah. Sarah doesn't uh, doesn't complete her turn, and so this game never finished. So we skipped in like uh, twenty six years. What was it? Twenty six. <laughs> He was trapped in that game for twenty six years. Yeah. So Sarah is chased out by bats, I think. And yeah, I mean, since she never took a turn, tor- turn, Alan is just stuck in there. So the house that they've been in, they become decrepit, like torn down, just like old. And a new family moves in, which is uh, the family of. Let me see. Uh, it was a uh, shepherd. I think Jack. Uh, it's Peter. Christian Dunst that it's Christian Dunst at least that plays Judy Shepherd. Yeah, so the, a new mam- a new family moves in. It's uh, it's an auntie, Aunt Nora, uh, with her two kids or not kids. They're like it's they're called Judy and uh, Peter, and both of them lost their parents in a uh, like in a car accident, and that's why they moved in with the aunt. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, and uh, as it goes, uh, on, in the attic they find Jumanji because the game still stayed in the house after all this time. Um, they start playing it. It starts with mosquitoes, which they chase away. Then monkeys, which then run am- run amok the um, run amok the, run amok the whole town. Uh, then uh, they can't continue because the next player in turn would be. Uh, Alan. Yeah. And luckily, Peter rolls a five, so he is released after all this time from uh, from the war game. Yeah. It's an interesting uh, twist to the re- reboot, I guess, because he in this movie is him coming out of the game and it's in our world all the time. In the remake, it's yeah. the, the so opposite remake... where they go in. Exactly. So in remake, everything that is happening happens in real life. There are no second chances. If you die in game, you die in real life because you only have one life and it's yours to have. <laughs> like, I mean, as the movie progresses, just shit goes insane. There are floods, there are like full on stampedes, and those are just like little kids. And also there's like a, like also there's, there is like a main villain who is Van Pelt. He is chasing after Alan because he rolled... Uh, he 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 fell on his face. Yeah, first question: Why didn't they stop playing the game? What there was a reason to why uh, they had to continue. Yes. So the reasoning was, as they released the monkeys, they decided. Well, the rule is: if we finish the game, everything will disappear. Like everything made of the game will disappear. So it just like resets back to zero. And because they already, like, their kids and they ruined the house that they just moved in, they said, okay, let's finish this so that auntie won't kill us if we, if she just finds this whole kitchen demolished. Yeah. Wasn't there a lion that came in the house as well? Yeah, that was that was right afterwards. Like, they start, like, they continued, like, rolling and the lion came. <laughs> the lion sleeps tonight. Yeah. So, um, so as I said... Uh, first mosquitoes, then apes, but because Peter rolled twice, he could roll again. And he rolled a five, which released Alan and also summoned a lion to their house. Mm. Uh, and afterwards, they had to find, yeah, like Alan rolled, I don't remember what he's got. Uh, but then afterwards, they had to find Sarah. Yeah, because, because she still she's was still a participant in the game, and 
She was a bit, bit messed up uh, after what happened in that night. Yeah, because like her the, the whole town just called her crazy. Like when she when she met Alan back and they show her the uh, the, the the board game, she just like I spent 2000 hours at a therapist to convince myself that this wasn't real. And now you're back. And uh, it and now she, and now you're back and now Alan is back and the board game is back and she's like whole life was like I she was right. <laughs> Mm. She wasn't crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that always seems to happen uh, in movies, yes. right? Where everyone say, says, uh, no, you're crazy, but no, it's actually true. Yeah. So, uh, so what, but actually the funniest, the funniest bit was they went to her house because they found where Sarah lived. She didn't move when she, from when she was a kid. And when she saw Alan, she freaked and then she lost consciousness. So what they did was they took her unconscious body back to the mansion and then she woke up on the couch. <laughs> they just straight up kidnapped her. I, I guess uh, so, but she she does stay with the gang after this all in the whole film, right? Yeah, so what happens afterwards was that they made a pact. Like, Alan is rightfully like angry at Sarah that like, hey, you left me there for 26 years. But then she says, like, yeah, but I was a teenage girl chased out by bats from a house. Everyone thought I was, like, bat, bat and... Bat shit like, crazy. Insane. Exactly. So, I'm sorry, but I'm really sorry about that, but I, there's little I could do. Um, so they made a pact that even if someone is sucked into the game, they'll continue yeah. playing. Didn't Alan's parents also die in this 26-year-old future? Yes, they did. So what happened was, like after Alan disappeared, they, uh, like his father was just like looking for every single way to save him. Not save him, just like find him. Because at the night for when he was kidnapped into the game, uh, he he literally told his dad, like I don't I don't want, I don't want to ever speak to you ever again, and uh, that he doesn't want to go to like a, a null boarding school. So he thought that Alan ran away from home. Mm. Actually, I, I, I started so, to remember so something cool. in the remake uh, be, because there is a kid in the remake that disappears for a long while and you also see a father who's... Yes, it's it's quite similar. It's it's almost like beat for mm. beat. But, uh, like, I don't think we had as much of, like, an introduction to the guy who fills the same role. Alex yeah. is his name. So in the remake, it's Alex who is stuck in the video game for some time. But we don't get as much information about him before he went into the game. He just like got the game. He said, ooh, board game. <laughs> then he got the video game and he started playing it and that's it. Yeah. But... Uh, like it was just like set up. Yeah, but uh, well, what can we more say about this movie? Um, Let's see here. They uh, continue to play the game. Shit happens all the time because the, when they play the game, there comes more animals. There comes this ha- hunter. Yes, exactly. That, a stampede. Yeah. There's like a like a carnivorous plant that is going after them. Monkeys just like sneak into a cop's car and fire off shotguns. Yeah. Then they then it turns out that a cop that got his car destroyed was a worker for. Carl's for uh, Alan's dad, and he ma- and Alan made him lose his job in the seventies. So he became a cop. So after they realize, hey, I'm Alan, he drives him to the uh, like uh, to the supermarket where the when they are being hunted by like a prize uh, hunter who wants to like get Jumanji to lure Alan to the store and kill him. Um, so they drive to the store, and he like handcuffs him to the. It's it just I can't really explain it, but it's just like. It's really hilarious what's happening in this movie. Yeah. Like, a little child almost got crushed in the car. In the next shot, he's just going without problems. Um, Isn't there also a big f- kind of flood that comes through the game as well? So, like, this, the town starts to come yes. underwater or something. Not the town, but what happens is... Or the house. Is, uh, after, yeah, so we're skipping some few bits. Like, we're skipping a few You need beats, to skip a like, few bits, Carol. Um, yeah, so Peter becomes a monkey, uh, he grows a tail, uh, 
and they went and they are going back to the house because they think that's the safest. The whole house is fully overgrown with like carnivorous plants. And I think Sarah rules that there will be like a monsoon like every six moons. So the whole house begins to like just rain, territorial rain. Everyone is drowning. There are alligators inside the house. They are going on like on a door to save themselves from being eaten alive. They're hanging on the chandelier. The cop is knocking the door and just like knocking off the door with the auntie outside and they're being floated away like on pizza, pieces of wood and long crocodiles. It's amazing. Huh. And it's it's cool it's cool because then they go to the attic, uh, the floor turns to the quicksand when the Alan is rolling and they manage to like stop it because uh uh, Judy, I think, was her, was her name. I always forget her name. Yeah, Joey. So Joey, she rolls again, and she, like, could, like, she, she, like, she goes back to space. So what she rolled, what they rolled before was not applicable. There isn't any quicksand. And it's really cute because, like, uh, like, Alan is getting closer with... Uh, Sarah. Uh, with Sarah, like... They started the, re- mel- the rumors that uh, kind of started the death night again. I mean, it wasn't really romance because Alan was still like he was born in the jungle. He he doesn't really pick up romance. He didn't pick up the beat when Sarah was trying to kiss him in one of the scenes. Huh. But it was just cute because when he was like drowning in quicksand. But, but well, wait like, a minute, he, said, he still has the mind of a child. Nah, like he's he was twenty six years in the jungle. He is an adult. Yeah, but like, doesn't he, he still kind adult. of act like a child, or something like that? I mean, he still thinks it's, like, a little bit, yes. He's childlike, but he's not a child. Yeah. But to complete uh, this movie, because uh, we can't get all the details, but uh, in the story, Alan and Sarah start to fall fall in love. I, I think they kiss at some point as well, and... They complete the game. Yeah, I mean, just at the very... Yes, but can I just say the finale? It kept me on, like, on my mm. edge. So, like, at the like at the almost ending scene, there's, like, an earthquake going around. They're being surrounded by spiders. Alan is stuck in the floor together with Sarah. Um, Joey is, like, hit with poison darts to her neck, so she's, like, she, she straight up almost dies. Uh, like... Peter is like brandishing an axe, killing spiders left and right. It was intense. Mm. And then Alan falls through the floor and like meets Van Pelt, who finally bought like really Ill- like really big guns from a big from a, like the the gun store. And just as he's like hands up, drop what you have, and Alan drops the dice and wins the game. Yeah, it was amazing. But interesting enough, I absolutely forgot that Alan and Sarah would. Go back to like. Did you forget that part when they were kids? Yes, I did. Because that's one of the, I guess, guess weird thing, or maybe not one of the weird things about this film, because it is kind of a weird film. But, um, yeah, the ending is of them uh, erasing their future in a way, and the two, and Alan and Sarah going back to time. And they are the only two people in the world that remembers what happened. I mean, you say that. I mean, they, they, they do remember that because, like, they prevented Joey and Peter's parents' death because they hired them as marketers mm. for their company so that they wouldn't go skiing in Canada and die. Yeah. Uh, but, I, I mean, like, we have a confirmation that they remember but we don't know if Joe and Peter remember. No, because, I don't like, think they the, remember. Like, in the remake, they... But, how? I mean, w- sure, this movie doesn't show us that, but in the remake, when the kids go back and everything is changed, they remember. Yeah, but, uh, they remember Alex and what they did in the game. That's kind of a different thing, I guess, because they return from the video game, and in this world, I guess it's a kind of complicated issue in a way, because... I, I felt like the movie made it feel like n- that the kids doesn't remember actually, but in the I mean, they could, but I think there is more evidence that they couldn't because like, um, Alan and Sarah threw the game down yeah. the, like a river, just so that could nobody. They, could they play also it. kind of and changed if... the nature of the history because they, 
they saved their parents that were supposed to die. Exactly. So their parents, like Alan's parents are alive. Uh, Joey's and Peter's parents are also alive. Uh, Carl is never fired from the company because Alan admitted to like uh, doing uh, problems uh, at the day when he was fired. Mm. So as they throw the game to the water, like then like it's not at the house. They're still living in that house. So Joey and Peter never move in so that they never play the game and never let him out. So how can they remember? Yeah. Well, to the next film. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next film is Jumanji. What was the name? I think it's just called Jumanji. I'm not really... Should we just call it Jumanji Reboot or... I'm not exactly sure. I mean, it is... Welcome it is, to the it Jungle. It is like a reboot sequel. Jumanji, yeah. Welcome to the Jungle. And uh, exactly. to be so... quite honest with you... I watched this movie f- before I watched the original with Robin Williams. So I, I, I've i actually okay. seen, seen this film first. And I know that you have, g- have gotten some problems with it. But I'm just going to say that I, ca- I kind of like the film. It's kind of a light tone. Kind of just go go with the flow and have fun kind of movie I felt like don't think I mean, too much and just have fun it, yeah I mean like after sitting on the I, I have to agree if you turn off your brain it's a it's a it, it, it's a film okay <laughs> to the rant then <laughs> you just made a face on me did I yeah okay but uh, we have kind of explained this before, but this movie, uh, it has nothing to really to do with the original, to be honest. It's more like uh, the original board game returns, but it transforms into a video game. And there are these four high school kids that I- instead of Yumanji coming to our world, it's th- those four characters coming to the Yumanji world. Yeah, I mean, five, wink, wink. So, but, like, even then, it's weird because, like, yeah, it must be a reboot because in the original movie, they throw J- Jumanji, like, in, like, in a river. Uh, just so that, uh, that nobody pl- will play. And it ended up, like, in France. So how would it end up, end it, end, it end up back in America? Actually, how was the video game in the school when I think about it? Like, I think it was, like, donated by the parent of the kid that got lost. Yeah. I guess so. I think so. That was... But in a, anyway, when these four high school kids comes in, they are, they get the, these new um, avatars that they start to look like. Like, uh, one of the kids turns uh, to um, Dwayne Johnson the Rock, the Rock uh, which... Yeah. Of course makes him the most powerful character of the game. Yeah, which which kind of make made me feel that the people who made this movie don't really play video games. Because mm. either he is like an easy mode character or he's just broken. Like he he literally has no weaknesses. Yeah, uh, that's kind of in some ways the point of his character. It's the it's the kid that kind of feels like he's useless getting the strongest power. Yeah, which is really dumb, I think. And the guy that feels like he is uh, tough and big kind of get the weakest character. Yeah. I mean, I like that because like it, it like he was out of, out of his comfort zone. Mm. I think just me disliking the rock having like or I mean, what was his name? His name was Spencer. So Spencer yeah, had Spencer. the like, most OP character. But I think for me, what really makes me feel like this is really like, eh, was because like there was like this Fast and Furious Hobbs and Shank, which was I've like, never seen actually Jason Hobbs Statham and versus Shank. The Rock. What, how, what, what was it called? I, I, I haven't seen any Fast and Furious movies, to be honest. Uh, well, it's like a spin-off from uh, uh, Hobbs and Shaw. I, am, and I Shaw. forgot the name. 
det var, det är yeah. inte ett release so later. Det är inte this Jumanji movie came before Hobbs and Shaw. I have no idea. I know that uh, Hobbs and Shaw released in 2019. Yeah, and they, they were, they, this released? movie released in 2017. It, yeah, so it was like after. It was some... Maybe, maybe... Vi- well, yeah, you? No, maybe that makes it a little bit better. But, you know, the thing with Hobbs and Shaw that makes this movie feel bad for me is, in that movie, The Rock and uh, Jason Statham had like a written agreement where nobody, like, they can't fight each other, each other because it would hurt their image. Okay. Like, if they were to fight, no, not a single one of them can lose. And it's contractually obligated that the movie, like, the movie directors will do this. Mm. The- and that's why I feel like, oh, you're so afraid to look weak on screen. So, and then you have in Jumanji, like, rock the, the Rock, the Dwayne Johnson... And he literally has no weaknesses. Like, come on, dude. It's just a movie. Yeah, but isn't his personality the weakness in this movie? He needs to grow as a character. It, it's <laughs> oh, it's I just... Mean, a, it all, it all just... It's just the, um, the... I guess the costume that makes him powerful. And then the things that needs to work is his inner self. And then it still doesn't work out in the second one. <laughs> he still he did he didn't change. <laughs> Actually, a good point. Fuck this movie. <laughs> exactly. No, I, no, I'm kidding. I still like this movie because I don't know. I I I just kind of feel like it's good time fun and. The character that I feel is m- is probably the most fun is uh, Jack Black's uh, character uh, Bethany, Bethany, who changes yeah. uh, who changes genders when she comes into this game as she's the the kind of the popular teenage girl who turns into uh, Jack Black, and <laughs> <laughs> and she has some of the funniest <laughs> moments of the film. I feel. You yeah. can't deny but that, should we right? Go through the... Yeah, so all of so we have Bethany, we have Spencer, we have Fridge, and we have uh, Marta, our four characters. Mm. And they get into Jumanji, uh, and they try to escape. Uh, along that, along with them, fought, like joins also Alex, which is the kid that got uh, trapped in the game some years prior. Yeah. Played by Nick Jonas. And. and yeah, which play which is, which is played by Nick Jonas, and for one moment I thought that he wouldn't show up in the second mo- in the second one. I was so angry about that, like I don't know why. I'm just like, why isn't Nick Jonas here? Oh, <laughs> uh, but that is probably just my fanboy. Where well, did you really Richie. like the Jonas Brothers when you were young or something? Yeah, I did. Like, hello, Disney Channel. They were like darlings for a moment. Camp Rock. Yeah, I was never that into Camp Rock. <laughs> tell, 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 I, I, I didn't really understand the Jonas Brothers when I was young because I kind of felt like they were big, but I did, I didn't feel like they were, had any good songs. To be honest, did I just say something that I mean... wasn't good or? <laughs> No, 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 no. I mean, everyone has their own opinions. And yeah, but, yeah, but can, when can, it comes to can, Jonas Brothers. Can you tell me a famous song of theirs in in their original days, not the not now when they have come back? Uh, Burning up and uh, uh, fell in love with a pizza pizza girl, and I think Year Three Thousand is also one of their songs. Okay. I, I remember that they had a TV show, TV show on the, the, the Disney Channel network, uh, Jonas LA or something. And it was kind of a, yeah, a weird so thing that they in... got a... It was kind of weird for them to have a TV show because they all looked like they didn't belong in high school. Yeah, that, that, that was a little bit weird. All I remember from the show was that they lived in a firehouse... And I really liked, and I really would like to do the yeah. same. And, and, and they had a second season where they also changed from living in this firehouse to 
now living in a in LA. I don't remember that. Uh, I remember it vaguely. I think I la- I remember it more for their music. Okay, wasn't it in that show that that song that you mentioned, the Pizza Girl, also came from? Uh, no idea. I just I just listened to their Spotify. Okay. Uh, anyway, now we have talked about the Jonas Brothers for a little while. Let's go back to Yumanji. <laughs> And thank you for part of the lore. So, what they do is they stumble and kill themselves and... Let, let's just mention that they have deaths. three lives. Yeah, so that is the big difference, which for me makes it like the statistics are not, not as high as in the original. Um, each of the players have three lives, which they can use however they feel like. Uh, sometimes killing each other. <laughs> yeah, that happened. Um... Uh, yeah, and uh, their goal is to get a sparkly gem of Jumanji. I don't know, actually know, remember. No, the they have the already the gem. They have to return the gem. Yeah, and put it in the statue's eye at the end of the game. Mm. Uh, and they have this uh, uh, kind of uh, weak villain that's always chasing them. Uh, yeah, so his his power is that, like he controls the nature. He controls like the birds, the animals, uh, the people. He controls Jumanji basically with the orb. Yeah, but he doesn't have the orb. I think he still controls it anyway. Like he still has control over birds and like small creatures. Yeah, but like, can he control all point? the animals? Because when they attack in the end, they use elephants to kind of uh, chase him away. Yeah, I remember that. That that may be it. Mm. How did you feel about the uh, other characters, except for Dwayne Johnson, I guess? <laughs> I mean, I I lo- I like Jack Black in every movie, um, and uh, I think all the other characters were pretty neat as well. Mm. It has Karen Gillian as Marta, who Marta is uh, this kind of character who. Uh, um, she's, she's just a shy girl who, who who wants to study and mm. think that like having fun is is a waste of time. Yeah, a character that I sometimes see in movies, but I have never encountered in the real life. <laughs> I met people like that, like not a lot, but I've met some. Okay, but you know what? She became cool in the second one, like. I don't think there's anything else we can tell about the first one. It was like, that's it. That's what happened. I kind of felt like uh, she did have this weird power, power, I guess, where when music starts playing, she kind of starts to... uh, Well, what was it called? She starts to be really good at fighting, I guess. Yeah, so she had all these skills. Like, Mm. every character has a weakness without Dwayne because he's special. Yeah, I guess... Uh, so I guess then, uh, Marta's characters was the second most powerful. Yeah, so her weakness was Venom, which is like legitimate weakness. Mm. When she got bit by snakes, she just instantly evaporates. Yeah. Um, and then we had, uh, yeah, Jack Black's character was, what was his weakness? Um, I don't remember actually. Uh, Endurance, how, how did I he, think? How did... Yeah, probably that. How did he die? It was first by a, a hippodamus. And the second time yeah. was... Oh, right. He ga- she gave one of her lives uh, away. Yeah. Which I thought was super dumb. Just to like... Like... Okay. Like, Alex's weakness is mosquitoes. And he gets bitten by mosquito. And he dramatically like... Ugh. My life is getting away from me. And then she transfers the life... Like to him, and then it never came back in like a whole movie and the other one as For well. For a game that's very into video game culture in some ways, um, that that's something that you can't do in video video games. You can't just give give one life away. Depends on what game, but I thought that there would be more like more significance. To okay, it. and uh, let's talk a little about uh, maybe about Nick Jonas characters because is this guy that comes from the the 90s and have been trapped in this game for like uh, what was it uh, 30 years or something 20 maybe 
it was a long time uh, at, at least because he starts to make these kind of references um, uh, like references that can belongs more to the 90s more, more than the modern day well anyway what can you say about this film um, it kind of ends like you would believe it to end of course they get the gem to this place and they shout you manje because apparently you needed to do that to finish the game and the characters grows in some way they start to become friends to friends with each other um uh. bethany suddenly becomes a good person like she mm. is going on to build houses in haiti and better herself. It, <laughs> she goes yeah. like on a whole spiritual journey. I guess it's kind of some way the bra- the breakfast <laughs> club, but the in video game form. Yeah. These four characters okay. that Let's... has different personalities that, in the end of the film, becomes friends. Yeah, it's the breakfast club, just with Jumanji <laughs> and video games. So this is a crossover between the breakfast club and Jumanji. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, but like let's talk quickly about the second one because we we are we we still have to talk about it. Yeah. Um So the second so, uh, the second movie which is the next level. Yeah. Is the the uh, so... cast of the rebooted one comes back for a sequel where they return to the video games in uh, some ways. And this time they also yeah. have uh, the two Donalds with them. Uh, Donald, Donald, um, two Donalds. Yeah, that's their n- real life names. You mean Danny yeah, DeVito? Yeah, Danny DeVito and uh, uh, let's see what what's the other name one called now? Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> we have Danny Glover <laughs> and Danny DeVito who joins the cast and are sucked in this video game too and. It's supposed to be this fun, this funny thing where these old dudes get these new uh, bo- bodies where now they're powerful again. But was it funny? Like after the fifth time, they said, "This is a video game." I, yeah, I it, wanted to shut it up. It kind of me. wasn't that funny after a while, but uh, yeah, you said that you liked this one more. Uh, can you give a reason to why you like this one more? Yeah, I mean, first of all, uh, Doctor Wellingstone got a got a weakness. <laughs> okay, what was that? <laughs> because uh, the weakness was switchblade, so it was we are delving more into the like backstory of his character. So the next level falls like, oh, there is another gem you guys have to find. Uh, but it's also like somewhat intervened with Doctor Livingstone backstory of his parents was killed by this bad guy so you meet his ex which was really cool because like because uh livingstone is 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 supposed to be uh eddie uh eddie who is spencer's grandpa he's a little bit a little bit more mature so it's like yeah the rock isn't playing oh i'm a shy weak nerd uh no he's like a cool guy he's danny devito in in rock's Boy, yeah, it, 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 we can also mention in this film there's a bit of a body switching. The characters sometimes switch avatars with each other's. Yeah, so it comes into play later. For now, at the beginning of the movie, we have um, in the game, like Spencer's, Spencer brings back the game because he is unhappy with his life. After they How exactly was the, the game movie, supposed to make his life better again? Because he wanted to be Dr. Livingstone. He wanted to be, like, the badass adventurer again. Who can blame him? So, like, all of his friends are, like, living life. He broke up with Marta because the long-distance relationship didn't work. He's, like, stuck in New York City in a school and in a job he doesn't like. All his, like, Bethany is, like, in Haiti building, like, houses. Um, uh, Fridge is, like, working out, having fun. Uh, Marta has a cute dog. Hmm. Like, it's all fun, but, but for him. So he comes back home for Christmas, and he boots up the game. And his friends are wondering where he is, so they go after him. Yeah, they so go in, as they boot up the game... They go into the game to get him back. Exactly. So 
Milo, which is Eddie's friend, Eddie who is Spencer's grandpa, Fridge and uh, Marta are stuck in the game. So Bethany is just like left outside, which I thought like, like wait, did she have enough like of a character development so that she's like leave, leave her be? <laughs> no, she comes in later. <laughs> She, yeah, first, she, like, first you gotta get uh, uh, Colin Hanks. Yeah, so she, so she, she goes to Alex and like, hey, my friends are stuck in the game again. Can you help us? Um, they find Spencer, who like tells them like, like his troubles. Like he felt like he couldn't find himself. Like he, he felt like his life wasn't really, uh, like he, like before he knew what he was, who he was. He had a girlfriend. He had like everything planned. And now when he's in New York, he doesn't believe, really, he can't really, he just wants to feel that feeling again. And, and I like that, like, Marta took the charge because she, at the beginning, like, was like, yeah, guys, this is a video game. We already did this stuff. Like, get on with the program. Yeah, but um, in a way, it's, I don't know, it's kind of the same humor. In, it's kind of them doing the same thing again, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, it was basically the same. Like, at the beginning, uh, Jack Black's character... No, it was uh, Milo's character, the backpacker, like the zoologist. Mm. He gets almost eaten by a uh, hippo again, like yeah. in the first movie. Then Jack Black's character is getting eaten by a snake, just so that it's different. Um, but I actually liked some of the places they went to this time. Yeah, it was kind of more uh, unique in places. They in the start of the movie they are in a desert. Uh, later on they are kind of in this um, play play town. Yeah, town, and later on they are. But that town had a little bit connection because Livingstone's ex was living there, which is like was pretty cute that like this old Danny DeVito could just meet like his pretend ex. Yeah. And beat up like 40 guys. Yeah, but... Uh, so, one of the most memorable parts for this movie, for me, was in this kind of bridge scene where the characters go goes and... Uh, kind of in this kind of mountain area where a lot, there's a lot of different bridges and they got gotta get their way through these different bridges, but some bridges breaks, they are chased by monkeys at the same time. It's kind of just a fun adventure kind of scene. Yeah, I agree. It was just like uh, all of the characters could, like, their abilities shine. So Dr. Livingstone, he was fighting monkeys. Uh, Marta's character was just, like, fighting her way out. Uh, I think it was not Bethany's. Uh, it was like, Jack, uh, like, uh, Jack Black's character. He was, uh, he was, like, showing everyone where to go. It was just, like, all around fun. And it was, like, exciting for some time because... At, like at this moment, a lot of the characters had like were on their last live, so like the stakes were a little bit higher than than mm. in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, and then they meet uh, Seaplane, which is Ar Alex's character, and uh, a horse, which is Bethany. <laughs> yeah, that's something that uh, there's not. Uh, I guess there's not a. There aren't a lot of. A character for all of them to be humans, so one has to be a horse yeah, now. Yeah, which is weird because, like, why, why a horse? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it it makes and, sense uh, at the ending of the movie, but it's still weird. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, this horse starts starts with being Bethany, but later on, um, oh, let's say Donald Glover takes his. The place of exactly. the horse. So the reason for that is. Oh, we we might be. It's a Pegasus horse, right? Uh, say it again. Pegasus. Yeah. A Pegasus so is a horse the with horse wings. Can fly, and uh, as we reach the climax of the movie, like we learn that uh, that uh, Donald Glover's character he has can like not cancer, but he's like he has a terminal disease, um, and uh, if he returns to the real world. There is no say how long he will live, like probably just like a few months. So, yeah, because he was sick in yeah, this movie. Yeah, he was. That was mm. That's kind of one thing that is about these old guys is him kind of trying to come back to Donald Glover's character and I guess kind of a poly guy thing or maybe have some kind of ending between the 
to the two of them because they worked in a restaurant for like uh, 30 years of their lives yeah, or something. Yeah, they were lifelong friends and they opened the restaurant together. But then uh, Milo, which is his, Donald Glover's character, he left uh, Eddie to like get married and just like retire. Uh, Eddie never forgave him for that, but uh, like this whole stunt with Jumanji brought them closer and gave him closure. Yeah. So this movie, yeah, it can it kind of ends like you you suspect it to end. Yeah. I guess they fight the villain again. The they win. win. They come survives. back to the world. Uh, Milo is turned into a horse and he stays it, in Jumanji. <laughs> yeah, that's that's almost the weirdest part in the fi- film is him. He kind of becomes the guardian of the Jumanji world in this horse uh, yeah, kind of character. Which is weird because like he could have just like why couldn't. Like, anyone change shape with him and then leave Jumanji. Like, he could just be, doc- like, Livingstone. Actually, that's a good point when I think like, about it. He could just be, it. like, a normal dude or, like, a super powerful, cool chap. Yeah, but uh, the other character couldn't fly, Carol. Uh, well, anyway, um, so we have gone through these three films. Um, l- let's uh, just talk about the reboot again because I didn't really feel like we got really to the point where why did you dislike the remake so much compared to the other two so the like as i said the original had stakes we had more investment to the original like person who was trapped in jumanji it was like like all all of the people's lives got better which is the same true for the remakes but like the main gang's life didn't change much. Like, they still went to school and finished and then... And, but in the original, like, they saved multiple lives by changing fate. Um, yeah, but did their lives need to change much? I guess not. But it'd be, like... I don't know, like, the whole movie felt like there was no stakes. Like, with the three lives and, like, the game elements, it just felt like... I mean, the... So you, you wanted them more to be some kind of danger to the exactly, film? Exactly, or... like they're playing with their lives at stake. But to me, it just felt like it's neither a game. Like the, the game like felt like an excuse to make the whole hmm. like world bland as possible with NPCs repeating lines and just make it like a vehicle for uh, like the a- for next action scene. I, I remember one part in the film where Bethany gives one of her lives to uh, this airplane uh, guy, and you you lost it kind of in the in that scene because you felt like it was so stupid that she could do because that. Because it's so stupid, like oh, he was bitten by mosquito and now he he is dying tragically. Like it felt to me like it was only made up so that everyone would be at their last life before the final battle. Yeah, but. Uh, you uh, you miss some stakes in it, okay, but uh, but stupid death. The movie I kind of felt like the movie I kind of felt was supposed to be kind of fun and go with it kind of movie. How did you feel about that aspect of it? As I said, if you if you try to not think of it as a, like if you, I I suppose if you f- try to think of it like Jumanji itself created this game, it would explain a lot of the dumb stop happening into it like it's a board game it doesn't really know much about video games it's like it saw a kid play a game in the 90s and thinks that's how games look like this game kind of is it supposed to be kind of a 90 ki- 90s kind of game yeah, like or? i imagine because that would make it like a little bit more palpable hmm. like it's just a 90s game with people getting uh, sucked maybe. into it i guess lives are not kind of used in the same ways in, in newer games like there was in the, the older games. Mm. Because lives, uh, now, lives nowadays are kind of not there in some way. In a lot of ways they aren't. Like for Minecraft for example. Unless you play on hardcore, you don't really need lives. You don't use them. Uh, in Mario, like 3D yeah. World, you can have like 999 lives. It's more of like a like a remnant of of just like of Mario games. Yeah, it's at this point. You kind of don't lose anything anymore. Uh, 
Do, do you remember uh, when we, when we played the C- Crash Bandicoot before and we we were so worried about di- dying because we didn't want to restart a exactly. level. Exactly. But like <laughs> <laughs> but when we played together, it was also because we didn't want to lose time because we were racing against each other. Yeah, um, we we might discuss this in another episode, but we once upon a time did a versus if, where we played a, the, the game Crash Bandicoot 3. Yeah, and I lost because... So uh, more on that on a future episode, maybe. So yes, if you have any opinions about Jumanji, maybe you want to change my mind, leave a comment... I I still feel like they're kind of these fun kind of movies where you are not supposed to think a lot a lot about them. Just just enjoy the ride. You can say, I I kind of I kind of li- like them for for that way. I don't really think of them as anything deeper per se. I maybe wanted it to be be a little bit deeper. Like maybe I felt maybe it was not deep enough. Like I like that. Like at the end of the yeah. second one uh, of the remake, there was like a hint. Of the upcoming movie taking place in our world, so there wouldn't be lives. Hmm. Oh, but um, can can it really do that? Because doesn't that mean that the rock wouldn't return? <laughs> but at the same time, you know they gotta have him in there I some mean, way. You say that, but anything can happen. Like we had a band of ostriches come out of the video game. Who says that Doctor Livingstone cannot come as well? Yeah, but anyway, that is our kind of opinions and the thoughts about the Umanji movie series, I guess. Uh, has it been confirmed that there will be a third one when I think which I, about yeah, it? Yeah, there, there is a confirmation for the third one, which I think is so funny because mm. at the end they're like, yeah, well, let's never go into the video game ever again. And we already know that there will be a third movie. <laughs> yeah, this movie were kind of su- su- sec- su- successful, uh, successful, uh, su- su- successful. Can you say that word for me, Carol? Su- yeah, successful. Su- successful. Exactly. Successful. Uh, the first one made $962 million. And it was the fifth highest grossing film of 2017. And the sequel came out actually pretty fast. It came out 2019 and it made uh, $800 million. Do- dollars. Uh, but it was a tenth of that year actually. So kind of a su- successful series I guess. So um, well anyway. Thank, thank you for listening to this episode of the week I guess. Uh, we have been the Media Bubble Podcast and don't forget to um, subscribe or la- like us and, uh, you know. Exactly. As, as Fredrik said, don't forget to like, subscribe and follow us whenever you listen to us. Yeah, follow us on whatever plat- platform you're list- listening on us to. So thank you. This was Carol and Fredrik. Good night, everyone. Good night.